lot of things that people have not been told before. <laughs> Reminds me of, of a vacation I took with my daughter to Omaha, Nebraska. And uh, she has a, uh, she has a, a cousin that was there. And uh, I don't think he's older than she, than she is, but he's larger than she is. And uh, I think he, he might have been older than, 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 than she was. But they was playing a video game. And I looked at this, the score on this video game, and I felt sorry for my daughter. Ah, uh, because I assumed that she had been stumped. So I wanted to encourage her. And so I started making some excuses for why she got such a low score. And then she corrected me. <laughs> she said, Daddy, uh, you think that's my low score, don't you? <laughs> I said, yeah, well, I think that's your low score. She said, uh-uh, that's his. <laughs> There are a lot of people that uh, are making the wrong assumptions about Jesus, and I'm here to, to set the record straight, uh, give you the straight, the, uh, the real truth, just like my daughter uh, told me about that, about that score. I've heard time and time again that God loves everybody. <laughs> well, that's no big deal. No, nah, that's no big deal for God to love everybody. Why? Because he is love. It's not the idea that God loves. He is love. He doesn't love. He is love. But the, that's, not, that's not the issue. It's to whether or not God is love. Because Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So it's not the idea that uh, God is love. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So what you want to know is, not whether or not God is love, you want to know what saith the scriptures. <laughs> That's what you want to know. You want to know what saith the scriptures. You want to know what does the Judeo-Christian Bible say about it. And let me clarify that. You really want to know what does the New Testament say about it? Because the Old Testament doesn't give you an answer about your destiny, nor how to get there, nor where you're going, nor anything that has to do with a new birth. And half of the Jewish leaders in the Old Testament didn't believe in a resurrection in the first place, less known a rapture. So you have to be careful when you talk about God is love and base your eternal destiny on the fact that God is love. Uh -uh. God is love is who he is. What you want to know is what words of instructions ha, ha, has he given in the New Testament? You can't get to heaven. You can't get to Jesus. You can't be in Christ from the Old Testament. I had a preacher tell me a couple of days ago that he could preach 
people of heaven from the Old Testament. I felt sorry for him. And I wouldn't let him leave without telling him the truth. There's no way to be saved in the Old Testament. No way. That's what spawned the Protestant, not a Reformation, revolution in 1517. Martin Luther finally read Galatians chapter 2. 2 verse 16, 21, 31, Galatians 3, 21, 22, Romans 8, 5 through 11, and Romans 3, 24 through 28. And he says, hey, He said the same thing that I'm telling you. You have got to change. I'm talking to clergy now. You have got to change your Old Testament mindset. You got to come on up out of the New Testament and get real. Reality begins with the birth of Jesus. Truth about God's eternal plan for the destiny of mankind, the truth. In other words, the, the final revelation on how God forgives sin, grants eternal life, and the sin that still separates man from God, and what man must do to be saved, those four factors of salvation, redemption and salvation, can only be found in the New Testament. You can talk from the Old Testament until you're blue in the face or black in the face, whichever, and you will never, ever get anyone saved. I mean, born again. You can get them to have an assumption like I had an assumption that my daughter had the lowest score until she told me that she didn't. And you can assume that you can get to heaven some other way other than by through faith in Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, it's just not so. Now, let me say a few other things. While God is our creator, in this New Testament era, separated from the Old Testament era by uh, 400 years of spiritual silence leading up to the birth of Christ. That's why any of the scholars and philosophers and writers that were born between 400 B.C. and one or two A.D., five, up to five A.D., there's no spiritual revelation in anything that they wrote, them Platos. Any scholar, scholar or philosopher that was born from 400 B.C. up to about five A.D., depending on when, when you put the birth of Jesus of Nazareth, there's nothing spiritual in their writing. It's just like reading the funny book. And here people have spent their whole life reading Aristotle, reading Plato. They might as well go read Dick Tracy. Nothing spiritual. Might be some sound wisdom for the flesh but nothing, nothing spiritual. And uh, while I'm at it, I might as well say this. Logic, reasoning, philosophy has no bearing on Christianity. I don't care if you're a philosopher. I don't care if you're a psychologist.